Hello, and today I'll be making some bromine. So, first I weighed out 153.5 grams of potassium bromide and added this to a 500 milliliter glass beaker. To this, we add 47.4 grams of potassium permanganate. We give both reagents a rough mix to allow for a smoother reaction. To this homogeneous mixture, I add approximately 100 milliliters of water. This is to stabilize any manganese heptoxide if it forms in our reaction flask. If you didn't know, manganese heptoxide is an extremely sensitive explosive and its formation would probably not be in our best interest. The reason why the water was purple was due to the potassium permanganate impurities. Anyways, this mixture was then added to a 1000 ml 3 necked round bottom flask. The addition was quite messy, but this doesn't affect much. An important step when doing this reaction is to lubricate all joints with sulfuric acid as normal grease would react with the bro produced bromine. I charge a 250 milliliter separatory funnel with 67 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Ideally, the use of a pressure equalized dropping funnel would be ideal. However, I didn't have one on hand, so I went with a separatory funnel. I set up a simple distillation apparatus, as the sulfuric acid is added dropwise and the bromine is generated, it will slowly boil off and recondense into liquid bromine flowing into our collection flask. The reaction is violent and exothermic, and due to this, I saw the use of a heating mantle impractical, as the heat generated is enough to boil off the form of bromine either way. And this can rarely be seen with the formation of the brownish fumes. The reaction going on here is a redox reaction, the potassium permanganate as a powerful oxidizer, is readily oxidizing the bromine anion in potassium bromide forming elemental bromine, which instantly boils off due to its low, low boiling point of approximately 59 degrees Celsius. The remaining products remain in the reaction flask as they are mostly solids such as potassium bisulfate and manganese sulfate. As the reaction continues, the color of the apparatus changes as the density of the bromine vapor increases. I added an ice bar to the collection flask to hopefully further condense any escaping bromine vapor. Another effect I witnessed was the pulsating bromine vapors as they as the sulfuric acid was being added. And here's a shot of the reaction flask as bromine is being generated. You can see small beads of bromine condensing on the sides and falling back into solution to be re-evaporated again. And here's a shot of the condensing tube, recondensing the bromine vapors. Eventually, over time, the bromine started to go into the collection flask, drop by drop. This bromine is relatively pure, but it's still mixed with water, and that's not what we want, so we purify this in later steps.
Anyway, the next step is to purify our bromine. And to do this, we add all our bromine to a 250 milliliter separatory funnel alongside a few milliliters of sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid in this step acts as desiccant and pulls out all the water from the bromine. The two chemicals are shook and vented a few times. Venting is important as if we do not vent, the pressure buildup in the flask may explode, causing some terrible burns. Trust me, I know from experience. We then let this mixture sit for about 10 minutes and separate into two separate layers. Since bromine is two times as dense as sulfuric acid, we drain the bottom layer into a separate beaker. This is our bromine. Our bromine may still have some sulfuric acid in it, which has a chance of interfering with reactions, so we need to redistill this. Boiling point of sulfuric acid is way higher than, than that of bromine, so the bromine will be pretty much the only thing that distills over. A pure bromine finally distills over. I made two ampules from chest tubes to store the bromine and here it is, our final bromine product. It is a very dark brown reddish colour, almost similar to soy sauce. Bromine fumes are also denser than air, so when I pour it, you can see all the vapours flowing down like a waterfall of sorts. Before I end this video, I want to show you two reactions with bromine. Our first reaction is the reaction of bromine with titanium metal. between bromine and magnesium. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.